So, uh, hey. yesterday, I was uh, packing a whole bunch of fucking stuff up so I could go uh, jam with some friends. <laughs> I'm going to jam with some friends with my dick out. <laughs> well, I do rock out with my cock out. But, um, no, I mean, like, it, it's not like a real band or anything. It's just, you know, some friends getting together and whatnot. Are you called the, um, the Sandstoners? Because if you're not, you failed. <laughs> no, we're the big shiny dudes. <laughs> That's like the best story title ever. <laughs> <laughs> Well, in the in the 90s and, like, 2000s, I guess, um, in Canada, Much Music used to put out this compilation CD called Big Shiny Tunes. Oh, that's and, nice. And it was just, like, you know, like, rock alternative kind of stuff. Yeah. And so that's what we play, so I just, I called this Big Shiny Dudes one day, and it just kind of stuck. <laughs> um, but anyway... Um, so I was, you know, like, getting, uh, some microphones and stands and things, and I fucking broke the mic clip off this microphone Damn. stand. Damn, yeah. Yeah, like, uh, you can probably kind of see it. I mean, the audience can't, but <laughs> you, you probably can. I have it fucking zip-tied on I here. I see it now. It looks like little <laughs> dragon wings. <laughs> Dude, that's so fucking awesome. <laughs> so I, I'm going fucking like gorilla hardcore tonight. Hey, what's up, little baby birds? We are back. <laughs> 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 is that is that what we call our fans now yeah baby birds <laughs> why not i dig we, it we don't have a name we don't have a name before do we no nope <laughs> so there you go baby birds so how, how you been doing bro been on the up and up i would say well, that's good because i know you've been yeah i mean tubs. not to get into my personal life or anything but <laughs> Things got kind of shitty for a while there, and now I'm bouncing back. Yeah, bouncing like, back like a rubber band, bro. Yeah, or some nice firm testicles. <laughs> so we're we're good to go. We're balls deep. <laughs> well, I missed you, man. It's been a while since we recorded. Because <laughs> like. I was in fucking California for fucking two weeks. You you guys don't have any difference, but we haven't seen each other for like three weeks. Damn, it's been it's been a bumpy ride, dude. Actually, when I was driving back, and not really, I driving back. I don't fucking drive. My girlfriend was driving back. It was late at night. We're going through the middle, like legit the middle of the fucking uh, country, like going north. It was uh like eight o'clock or something, and on the right side it was dark with stars. On the left side it was fucking bright and sunny. It was fucking cool as fuck. Awesome. Whole time we're going north, I could just see the fucking the darkness overtake the fucking world. It was badass. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like something you'd write a story about. Nah, I didn't do that though. <laughs> well, that's okay. <laughs> There's always next time <laughs> in the fantasy future. Or past. What do I write about? Past. <laughs> Who knows anymore? Did yeah, we like, even say the name of the show? No. We Welcome didn't. to Cyborgs and Dragons, everybody. <laughs> yep, my name is Damon Taco Beans. And I'm Skeletroy Blockbuster. And have we got <laughs> some stories for you if Damon doesn't choke to death on his cactus cooler. <laughs> that was legit. Ow. <coughs> Uh, just the carbonation just went right into my lungs. <laughs> oh, man. That really hurt. I really hope. Like, I don't know. <sighs> I'm fat, guys. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but I'm really fat. <laughs> Damon's always doing all these crazy stunts, but don't put drinks in your lungs, guys. <laughs> Nobody wins. <laughs> Nobody, yeah, no. Bad time. Bad time. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> you want to just get to the story? Tokens? Yeah, let's get into it. Oh, fuck, the guy that every time, every time we do, hey, let's do the story, they're like, oh, wait, I forgot about prompts for this week. What were the prompts for this week, Troy? <laughs> uh, this week, we're uh, doing stories about pyramids. Yes. And book fairs. Thank you, Red Rich, at Amori, with a zero instead of a O. I don't think we've ever said that once. <laughs> but that's his Twitter handle. And if you want to fucking give us a prompt, go to Twitter, go to Facebook, go to YouTube, type something, we'll see it, and then we'll use an episode. Thanks, guys. Also, let's start the stories now. <laughs> All right. Rad. This story is called Chapter 2, Kumquat Reloaded. Ooh. Yeah. <clears throat> when we last met General Kumquat, he was in the middle of his quest of finding his wife's soul in the Badlands. And now we meet him in the middle of his quest. General and his dick piercing found himself taking a wrong turn at the petrified eyeball forest and somehow ended up in the desert. Of course, they don't have any supplies or water or anything to aid them in their trek. Because they are men and only pussies ask for help. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm like actually windy because I, I cough so fucking hard. So I'm going to take a minute. <laughs> and like, All I'm right. So uh, I'll just I'll just go <clears throat> off on a side track here. Cool. So you, you know how like... Um, when we write our stories, there's always, like, similarities and stuff. Yeah. I was like, oh, man, he wrote his about the... Oh, wait, we're both doing pyramids, so of course he'd be <laughs> in the fucking desert. Yeah, where else... I mean, you could have space pyramids. A space pyramid, or maybe, like, a <laughs> like Incan rainforest yeah. pyramid. Or... But, I mean, I, I went desert, too. The spoilers. Yeah. Generally, that is the way you go. All right. <clears throat> The dwarf dick piercing popped his head out of General's pants. Hey, man, we are friends, right? The dwarf dick piercing asked. Of course we are, General said with a grin and then patted the dwarf's head. Then I have one more question. Shoot, General shrugged. If I'm your friend, the dwarf paused and looked down. Then why does the narrator never refer to me by name? It's always dwarf or a dwarf dick piercing. It makes me sad. General stopped. Hmm, I don't know. General raised his head to shoot, shout to the heavens. Hey, man, why don't you call him by his name? The neighbor had to stumble for words. Uh, I don't know. It never came up. Have you tried asking him? Yeah, have you tried asking me? The dwarf said <laughs> like a mouse. Uh, God damn, there you go again, not calling him by his fucking name. Journal is visibly pissed. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What is your name, sir? The narrator's forehead began to generate small beads of sweat. My name is Raphael. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you, too. The bull shook hands in their minds. <laughs> so, General and Raphael are on their journey to find General's wife's soul. We know this shit already, Raphael screamed. Do you just want to cut to the cool part? The narrator's forehead sweat began to drip heavier, almost like a slime that you could smell with your nose. General and Raphael in unison said, yes. Cut to an ominous, enormous figure in the background, hidden by the thickest of all the sandstorms. No, I think that's a little too close. Can you skip even more? Raphael demanded. Fine. Cut to inside the pyramid. Yes, it was a pyramid in the background. I had this whole thing planned. It was going to be spooky, eerie, and a literal fuck ton of cool. But Raphael cussed off the narrator again. Yeah, yeah, sure, whatever, dude. The narrator's forehead began to steam the sweat that was once there with the rage that burns for Raphael. That's it. I had it. You, sir, have no more lines. <laughs> <laughs> Just then, and in time for something interesting to happen, a man covered in cuts and scrapes on his body comes crawling out of a hole from the leftmost side of the room. The room was lit by candlelight and smelled of peaches. The man began to speak. Please help me, sir, would you? The general walked up and examined the man. What happened here? 
He was too much for my team. We never stood a chance. Who is he you speak of? General demanded. The man on the floor raised his hand to the ceiling with with pointing. Wait, what the fuck? <clears throat> the man on the floor raised his hand to the ceiling, pointing with his pointer finger. Him, General looked up with a snap. All General could see was a black rain down from the ceiling and oozing from the cracks. The sludge collected on the ground around them. General heard a whisper. Buy my books. <laughs> he turned around, finding nothing but the black sludge filling the room. The walls began to lose their golden color, trapped behind the blackness. Raphael popped out of the general's waistband once more and made a gesture indicating they should get out. General agreed and tried <laughs> to flee. <laughs> but to no avail. The blackness gathered around his feet. With every struggle, it would grab tighter and tighter until he was fully encased. He closed his eyes, accepting his fate, and to have his last thought be about Lady Lightning, his wife. General felt something scaly on his face. It was slightly cold and hand-shaped. General opened his eyes to a hideous sight. It was Letheral Fault, a snake woman with gray eyes, wore a black leather jacket, fangs for days, and she was the head of the Bum Dagger Book Fair. <laughs> Thanks for days. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Hello, General. Long time no fuck. Leather. <laughs> Lethril said, sexy as hell. You, General's bow furrowed in anger. I should have known it was you. She grabbed General's face and tangled her tongue with his for an uncomfortably long amount of time. So long, in fact, the dude on the ground had to ask, You guys know each other? Lethril pulled back from General's face and said, Ah, yes, him and I, we go way back. She gestures with her right hand back and forth. Don't we, honey bear? General face drooped with unsatisfaction and sighed. <sighs> she was my high school librarian. I lost my virginity to her. You know, that whole thing. Lethril grabbed his junk and stated, Indeed, this will be forever mine. Raphael bit her hand through the pants. Oh, what in the world? She tore his pants off with one single swoosh to reveal Raphael in the middle of a general's penis, unbathed and happy. Shocked by this sight, Lethril became furious. What did you do to your glorious pecker? That was a symbol of our love, a symbol of our forever happiness. Lethril began to weep. Fine! Lethril lifted her head. If that's the way you want to treat your golden cock, this is how I'm going to treat you. She pressed on a wall panel to reveal a hidden room. Meet your destiny. General, still trapped in the black sl sludge, struggles to get out. Mr. Kumquat, welcome to my year-round book fair. You are now in charge of storing all of these books. In the room were books scattered everywhere, the to the ceiling and wall to wall. And guess what? Lethal continued. The only thing I sell are Tyler Perry Medea movie manuscripts and <laughs> fan fiction. <laughs> she cackles in triumph. Have fun. And then slam the door closed. To be continued. Oh, that was awesome. Thanks, man. The last joke of the Tyler Perry thing, that was my girlfriend. She was like, you should do that. And I was like, that's fucking hilarious. <laughs> so thank you, babes. But yeah, that was fun. <laughs> I dig it. I wish I had a snake woman librarian that took my virginity. <laughs> I wish I had a woman to take my virginity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suppose baby steps. Work up to the yeah. snake women. Yeah, totally, man. Everything's a stepping stone. <laughs> 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 oh, man. So I'm super stoked to hear your story, man. All righty. So this one's called More Like Book Unfair. Am I right? <laughs> you are right. <laughs> I mean, we'll see, I guess. <laughs> it was a bright day in the film studio. What with all the spotlights? A table was sitting in the middle of the set, 
with a nice white tablecloth and a spread of a balanced breakfast that'd put you right back to sleep if you tried to eat it. Eat all of it first thing in the morning. <laughs> uh, real talk, I, I tried to do that once. Like, yeah. you know, the ones you see on fucking commercials, right? Where they <laughs> yeah. have, you know, like, an orange <laughs> cut up and, like, a glass of milk and a glass of juice and, like, fucking, yeah. like, a banana and your cereal and toast. Yeah. And, like, I yeah. went right back to bed. I was just, I can't handle this shit. <laughs> it's way too much carbs. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> Behind the table was a chair. And sitting in the chair was none other than sports ball superstar Gumdrop.exe. Yes. <laughs> Buy Gumdrop cereal today, the Cyberclop said as he held up a <laughs> box with his face on it. It's the marmalade flavored cereal that gives me the strength to throw my opponents into a volcano. <laughs> Cut! The director yelled. That's a wrap. The director walked onto the set. Gumdrop, baby! That was perfect! You're gonna be an even bigger star now that you have your own cereal. I'm gonna recommend you to all my film director friends. You're gonna be the biggest thing since laser-sliced bread. <laughs> the director put his arm around Gumdrop, and the two walked off the set and into a trailer while the rest of the Technomancers watched with a sad realization. He hasn't been to practice in three weeks. <laughs> John Dongle, the Technomancer's second-in-command, said in frustration, What are we going to do without our team captain? The Technomancers looked at each other, hoping someone would come up with a suggestion. Nobody did. So they just stared at each other for, like, 45 minutes. <laughs> 45 minutes later, John Dongle had an idea. I've heard of a legendary tome in the desert where the sandstoners live. It's said there's a pyramid that holds a book with a spell that can summon the ultimate team captain. The Technomancers thought it was kind of weird that that would be a legend even this far in the future and that nobody had ever gone to the pyramid to check it out. So they did. <laughs> Along the way, they found a, an abandoned sandstoner party oasis. There was a burned-out fire pit, sandstoner hair clippings, a.k.a. bits of weed everywhere, <laughs> a pair of panties thrown on a cactus, an invitation with your name on it that they forgot to send you, and a golden disc sticking out of the ground. <laughs> the best part is they have an invitation with your name on it. <laughs> that I forgot to send you. <laughs> That's fucking genius. <laughs> John Dongle looked at the disc and picked it up, brushing the sand off of it. I should probably take this, he thought as he put it into his bag. Then I should listen to episode 4 to figure out who it belongs to. It looks like a pretty important plot device, but it, it's like they just forgot about it. <laughs> the Technomancers left the party oasis and continued on their long journey, which ended as the pyramid came into sight. They saw a giant banner hanging from the front of the pyramid, but were unable to read what was written on it. They got closer and the letters and words began to take shape. It read, Going out of business sale. The Technomancers were puzzled, but continued ever onward. They finally made it to the pyramid and saw a number of shelves set up in front of it. Each shelf had a variety of old-looking, dust-covered books placed upon it. John Dongle looked around and saw a mummy sitting at a table with a cash box and abacus set up beside him. Excuse me there, John said as he waved and walked toward the mummy. What's going on here, Mr. Mummy? The mummy looked up at John. Well now, that's a bit rude, don't you think? <laughs> the name's Rub My Cock Off the Third. And you are... 
I'm John Dongle of the Electricity Technomancers. My team and I have come here to search your pyramid and find an ancient book. Well, you're too late. I had to give up haunting that pyramid, and nobody ever came to discover its secrets. And the internet's not cheap out here in the middle of the fucking desert, you know what I'm saying? So I'm selling all of the stuff I could find in the pyramid so I can find a nice place in the suburbs. I've heard that Sparkton's pretty nice. Fuck Sparkton, John exclaimed. <laughs> I'd never want to live there. They just passed a law a few months ago that said the kinkiest you can get on a Friday night is a dry hand job. You might not want to live there if you want to get your dick wet. Well... It was removed before I was sacrificed to the sun god, but I appreciate the advice. Because of your honesty, I'll aid you in your quest. Oh, which book were you looking for? I recommend the top, the one on the top shelf here. John Dongle went to the shelf and pulled out the book in question. It was a pop-up book of naked women drawn in hieroglyphics. This is amazing! John Dongle marveled as he flipped through the book. I've always wanted to see an actual pornoglyphic book. <laughs> he closed the book and a cloud of dust went into the air. That's not the book I'm looking for, though. I was hoping you'd know where to find a book about summoning mystical beasts. The mummy's eyes gleamed. Ah, you want that book. He pointed to the largest book on the bottom shelf. John Dongle set the book on a table and began to leaf through its pages. This is perfect. How much do you want for this? Oh, and uh, I'll, I'll take that pornoglyphic book, too. Have to. <laughs> well, yeah, how, how could you not? <laughs> <laughs> the mummy's mouth curled and opened into a horrid, rotten smile. The price of that book is one golden disc. John Dongle reached into his bag and pulled out the disc. How did you know I had this? He asked, puzzled. I read the script, Rub McCock <laughs> off said with a laugh. I wouldn't let the producers use my pyramid if I couldn't read the script first. That's how I knew you'd have the talisman. And how I knew you'd give it to me because of how badly you want this book. They made the trade, with John Dongle reconfirming that the pornoglyphic book was in fact part of the deal. The mummy took the talisman and went back into his pyramid. The technomancers, somewhat confused by the recent turn of events, took a jump cut home. <laughs> back at the technomancer's house, they opened the book and all looked through its pages hoping to find the perfect spell to summon an awesome sports ball captain. After several hours and three quarters of the book scanned through, John Dongle's eyes widened. This is the one, guys. Get the ceremonial equipment. They donned their special robes and lit candles and did some other spooky things that I can't think of right now but probably involved blood or something. They gathered around the book, and, as a group, began to chant the magic summoning phrase. To be continued. <laughs> nice. Dude, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't done a to be continued in a while. No, I, I figured it was about time. Right on. That's what I did with my story. I was like, we haven't heard of the Adventures of Kumquat or never. Let's just, let just do that. Yeah, we both kind of went back to the classics. We're going back to the well immediately. <laughs> <laughs> We've done 11 episodes and we're already running out of ideas. <laughs> Hey everyone, and welcome back to Storytelling 101. I'm Professor Blockbuster. And I'm Professor Blockbuster. Uh, that's not right. Oh, I'm sorry, wait, wait, sorry. 
All right, I got to change my face. Here we go. I'm D- Dr. Taco Beans. Oh, my God. You hey. changed your face. I know. I fucking had to change my whole personality. That was crazy. Be... <laughs> yeah, dude. I don't know Gotta what's going on any- anymore. Can't even say words. <laughs> yeah. So what are we doing today? Because so, I honestly don't know. So <laughs> today's lesson, uh, uh, I've been standing up here front of this fucking chalkboard with you looking at these yeah. dead-eyed students i mean that one over there in the corner is actually dead you know what today's lesson is go find your own fucking inspiration you know it, it it's one thing to like listen to some guys talking shit in front of you but like what have you done seriously like just get out there and find something that that makes you want to do something. Not just because somebody's like, oh, well, this is how you do things. You fucking lazy pricks. Are we doing, like, bad cop, good cop, and you didn't tell me? <laughs> I don't even know anymore. Because <laughs> I totally agree with that. <laughs> but, like, yeah. <laughs> just make your own inspiration, I guess. Just start, I don't know. Don't listen to me, though. Just do it. <laughs> I don't know. Today's lesson is don't listen to anyone. <laughs> yeah, take that to the bank. Yeah, dude. Especially inner demons. You want, you know, the one that tell you to kill people. Just don't listen to them. Just do what you want. Uh, maybe listen to some of them. Mm, depending on the mood and what time of day it is, and what you can get away with. <laughs> Today's lesson is: murder people is okay if you like murder Trump. <laughs> See, that's a whole bunch of lessons that you learned today. <laughs> Now get yeah. out there and do something like murder <laughs> yeah. Trump. Yeah, I, it is an option. I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, I might be in the future, but I don't know what happened. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, like, your stories come from a portal, right? You don't actually don't you don't write them. Your stories come from a portal from the future. Yeah, and I mean, it might even be an alternate future. I don't. I don't know where these things come from. Right, the multiverse. <laughs> the one universe where me and you are just dogs, but with like giant dicks. Oh, that would be awesome. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> Even just a universe where we had giant dicks. Nah, dogs. <laughs> I'd settle for either or, but both would be good. All right, real talk. If you could, if you want to, okay. Would you rather be a dog where you could lick your dick or just have a giant dick? But it's too but it's too big to like fuck people with. Would it be big enough to lick? Yeah, of course. Then I, I don't know cuz it would be cool to be a dog. Yeah. Oh, you got me on this one. I know. Class dismissed while we go discuss this. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any uh, suggestions for prompts for next time? No. Nope. I had no suggestions. Nope. All right. Let's do ghosts. Ghosts? Yeah. Nice. Uh, then my suggestion is going to be... Mm... Fuck, I don't know. How about uh, arsonists? And his ghosts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So, everybody, thank you for listening to this episode. My name's Demon Taco Beans. And on the next episode, we're doing these props. It's gonna be arsonists and ghosts. Yeah. We've been your singing hosts. Yeah. <laughs> and then we're gonna see you on the next episode. Episode with my whole episode escape. 13. It's spooky like ghosts and arsonists. <laughs> and if you want to leave a suggestion for a prompt, uh, go to Facebook CND underscore podcast. Uh. 
Twitter, CND underscore podcast, YouTube, Cyborgs and Dragons. Leave a comment, do whatever you want to do. We don't care. Yeah, whatever. We're going to do the show no matter what you do, so. You know. <laughs> Next episode! It's going to be better than this one. We can only hope. <laughs> we can drag this out forever. This one's <laughs> running a little short, so we're gonna do some singing for you, baby. Baby birds, come back next time. We'll give you some stories to regurgitate in your mouth, and you can swallow it forever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think that's good. <laughs> okay. <laughs>